Hello everyone. I am Deepti Jain, Assistant Professor at Transportation Research and Engineering Preparation Center, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. In this series of decarbonizing transport in emerging economies, I am going to discuss about the how do we understand the demand for active mobility in Indian cities, and specifically, I'll be looking at the examples from Vishakhapatnam. So let us first try and understand what do we mean by active mobility. These are essentially those trips that require physical energy usage by pers uh, by the people themselves. These modes, for example, include walking, bicycling, and even pedal-assisted bicycles. Depending on the cities and the po uh, policy adopted in various cities, other modes, for example, cycle rickshaws, skateboards, can also be included. Traveling by active modes bring both personal environment and social benefits. It helps in improving personal health and well-being, but also helps in addressing air pollution and noise pollution. As per WHO recommendations, a person should walk for a minimum of 30 minutes to be able to have a healthy lifestyle. On the right side, I am showing over here are the three different modes of transport, which can be considered as the active mode that are walking, bicycling and using pedal assisted bicycles. For all of these three different modes, the average speeds vary and therefore the spatial reach of the three different modes vary. So now let's look at how does the three different modes compare with respect to the spatial reach and the time expenditure. Now if a person is walking, then they can reach in 15 minutes up to 750 meters or 7, uh, 0.75 kilometers. But if a person uses bicycle, then with the, within the same given time, they can reach up to 2 kilometers. And with the pedal assisted bicycle, within the given same time frame, they can reach up to 3 to 4 kilometers. So therefore, with the three different modes that can be counted as the active modes, the people will have different spatial reach within the same given time period. Now in the next set of slides, I am going to discuss about how does the active mode model share varies with respect to the cities and the economy. So in this graph, I am showing you over here are the comparison of the model share between different cities. On the left hand side of the graph, we have the cities from the high income countries. And on the right hand side of the graph, we have cities from the low and middle income countries. What do we see over here is that the active model share in the low and middle income countries is higher than the active model share recorded in the cities of the high income countries. Except in Linkopin, which is in Sweden, and Utrecht in Netherlands that have active model mobility share being more than 50%. While the active mobility share is higher in the lower and middle income countries, however, the question over here is, does the mode choice depend on the income? And if yes, then are the people captive to the given modes? Because of various reasons like affordability and availability of alternative. Now, to, do, uh, to understand that, what I am going to show over here is the comparison between the model share of low income group and high income group of society and how does this difference varies with respect to the cities belonging to different economies. So in this graph, if we see a positive percentage difference, that means that the lower income group is using more of that mode. And if we see a negative difference, then the high income group is using more of that. Mode. If we see over here, the difference between the active mobility of lower and higher income group, then we can see that the cities of lower and middle income countries have larger difference in terms of the active mobility choice, whereas that difference does not ex exist in the higher income countries. What does that mean? It essentially means that the people in the lower and the middle income countries chooses a mode with respect to their income levels. And therefore, relatively, we also see that 
the high income group people in the lower and the middle income countries use more of the uh, personal vehicles or motorized mode of transport to commute this therefore helps me in understanding that if the existing conditions of using walking and bicycling in the cities is not appropriate then potentially the people the lower income group of people in the lower and middle income countries are exposed to unsafe and uncomfortable conditions and therefore could be identified as captive users now let us try and understand how does the active mode in india are used so first let's look at how the policies for active mobility have evolved in india in 2006 national urban transport policy was adopted that introduced the concept of planning for people and goods but not for vehicles along with this the nnrm scheme was adopted by the federal government that enabled cities to introspect the mobility choices of the people and develop the visions and create plans for future of the cities later in 2009 guideline for nmt measures and policy was adopted and following that in 2010 National Mission on Sustainable Habitat was initiated. Later on, in 2012, pedestrian guidelines were at, became part of the Indian Road Congress Manual for Urban Space. 2013, we had Public Transport Accessibility Toolkit that helped transport operators and developers to evaluate the walking and bicycling as a choice when people are trying to access the public transport system. In 2014. National Urban Transport Policy was uh, revised with with an objective of including electric mobility as one of the component. And thereafter, then we see there are a lot of policies that have been adopted, including transit-oriented development, National Mission on Sustainable Habitat, and also Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs adopted public bicycle sharing guidance document. All of these policies. that have evolved over the years have focused on improving infrastructure for pedestrians and bicyclists in the cities census 2011 data had recorded details on the work trip and how people are accessing their job so here i am trying to draw a comparison of how the active mobility varies with respect to the population size in indian cities particularly for the work trips so here we see that the walk share ranges from 25 to 35% whereas bicycle share ranges from 8% in 8 million plus uh, cities population size cities to around 22% in 0.1 to 0.5 million population size cities overall active mobility share ranges from 38 to 59% while there is not much variation in the walk share between the cities of varying population size however there is a significant decline in the bicycle share with respect to the population size now we will try and understand how this uh, existing active mobility share differs with respect to the potential active mobility share we understand that the trips that are shorter than 1 km can be converted into the walk trips whereas the trips that are shorter than 5 km they can be converted or they can be identified as the potential bicycle trip now the line uh, uh, over here shows the share of trips that are shorter than 1 km and the yellow bar shows the existing walk share uh, that we had recorded from the census of india as we can see the walk share in existing condition is higher in all of the cities as compared to the potential walk share this means that the people in indian cities walk longer than 1 km to uh, to be able to access the job whereas when we look at the potential bicycle share we see that there is a difference in the potential bicycle share and the existing bicycle share particularly this share varies with respect to the population size of the city as we can see 
that if we are able to improve the bicycle infrastructure in cities which are greater than 4 million population, there we can increase the bicycle share by almost 12%. So, the active mobility share in Indian cities is high. However, there is a disparity in travel choices by both income and gender. For example, within same socio-economic levels, we can see that females are more dependent on active modes, particularly walking, than males. Now, as the income level increases for both females and males, the dependency on walking and bicycling reduces. But also, the disparity between females and males increases with respect to the socio-economic well-being score. This again brings me back to the discussion about the disparity in travel choices with respect to the gender and income. When we are discussing about it, it is very much important for us to know about the exposure of people to road-related crashes. So, looking at the data from Rishakapatnam only, we do see over here that around 49% of the people dying on the road are the pedestrians, while bicyclists constitute around 6%. Now, on the right hand side, you can see two pictures that have been taken from Google Streets, which are the pictures of the central core city area. And we can see the type of infrastructure that is available, whether it is respect, with respect to the medians or with respect to the availability of footpaths or segregated paths for walking and bicycling. Both of them are non-existent. When we discuss about the percentage of people dying on road, we also need to understand the relative exposure to risk, which is measured as the number of fatalities of that particular mode user divided by the number of uh, users that are present on the road. So we can see that both bicyclists and uh, people walking both of them have relatively higher exposure to the risk to for fatal crashes. Although the for the bicyclists, the percentage share in the total fatalities was 6% only, but they are greater exposed to the fatal fatality on road when we compare it with the pedestrians. The cities lack dedicated infrastructure and safe crossing, causing high risk exposure to its user. The lower income group of population who is more dependent on active modes are therefore exposed to more risk on the roads. They are more exposed to the unsafe conditions. This group of people cannot afford other modes of transport and therefore remain to be kept.